Hi, this is Uncle Kevin. I'm glad to have you join with us today and uh, continuing with our series to interview fund managers in South Africa. Today, I'm very happy to have Shanali Bosov from Prudential Investment Managers to join us to talk more about uh, unit trusts and the Prudential Investment Managers. She is Business Development Manager at uh, Prudential. So welcome, uh, Shanali, to our program. Thank you, Kevin. I really appreciate you having me. So I understand that um, you have been with Prudential for a while. First of all, can I ask you to tell us more about uh, you? How did you start in this industry? Where are you from? 100%. Thank you, Kevin. So as Kevin has mentioned, my name is Shanali Bosov and I am 26 years old. I actually only recently became a Bosov after marrying my husband, Paul. Okay. And we live in Pretoria with our two four-legged kids. Um, I have an honours degree in actuarial science from the oh. University of the Free State. Yes. Okay. Um, and I am currently studying towards the CIPM designation through the CFA Institute. So I am an academic at heart and I hope to one day retire as a university lecturer. Mm. My career started off at one of the major banks in South Africa where I worked as a data analyst, which was much more aligned with my line of studying. Mm. But I soon realized that the world of coding and modeling is not for me, Mm. and I would much rather be working with people. And an opportunity came my way, and I sent my CV into Prudential, went for the interview, And yes, before I knew it, I was employed and here I am nearly three years later and I'm very happy in my current position. I'm a business development manager for Prudential Investment Managers and I am responsible for managing relationships between advisors and Prudential across various regions in South Africa, including the Free State, Gauteng, Northwest and Mpumalanga. Okay, that's quite a big area to look after. Yes. uh, (laughs) It's interesting because I studied actuarial science many years ago at WITS. So good okay. to meet someone who's uh, in the same kind of line of yeah. training. But uh, <laughs> similarly, you know, like I was, I did actuarial work for about nine years. Then afterwards, uh, I, I kind of uh, started my own journey and uh, I didn't want to go back to actuarial. I want <laughs> to stay in the financial service industry. And uh, the, here I am, I've been a financial advisor for 15 years. <laughs> Uh, oh, I also love meeting uh, all kinds of people instead of just uh, looking at the screens the whole day <laughs> or crunching numbers the whole Definitely. day. Who is Prudential Investment Managers? Recently, I listened on 702. Again, uh, Prudential has some adverts talking about its approach and that. So can you tell us about who is Prudential Investment Managers? How did it all start? Thank you, Kevin. I'll do that. If you don't mind, I'll just share my screen with you. Perfect. I think that's the most asked question in the last year. Can you see my screen? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that's first of all, yeah. Prudential Investment Managers will soon be MG Investments. Mm. MG is our mother company situated in London with offices in Singapore, Paris, and Chicago as well. Mm. MG has always been the majority stakeholder of Prudential, and following a recent transaction to own 50.12% of Prudential, we have decided to adopt the same branding. However, our current investment philosophy, fund range, and investment team remains intact, and we still focus on delivering excellent returns to our clients on a consistent basis. The intention is simply to align with the global M&G investment identity. Hmm. So on the next slide, I'll talk a bit about our investment philosophy. So Prudential's investment philosophy consists of three main pillars, namely valuation-based, prudent, and long-term. We use long-run anchors of where assets should be priced to construct portfolios on a risk-conscious basis, focusing on the long-term and seeking to ignore short-term noise. We seek to to construct a cheaper portfolio of higher quality stocks without foregoing growth. So we don't have holy grail from superior insights, We don't have forecasting superiority and we don't employ a smarter team than the competition. Mm. We simply understand the nature of the markets in which we invest. We take advantage of price movements and value opportunities and we invest for the long term on a consistent basis. As we have always said, consistency is the only currency that matters. 
I need you to kind of unpack for our viewers. I understand I've known the Prudential brand for many years. I've attended the Prudential seminars in the past. You use this uh, Prudential, this lady, to mean certain things. And then, so going forward, when is the branding going to change? Is it going to happen later this year or is it going to be beginning of next year? So our goal is to have the transition complete by the middle of November. Okay. We have already launched the current campaign, mm. which we call Becoming MNG, yes. which is why you see on the logo Prudential Becoming MNG Investments. Right. So the transition is in place and we intend to have it done by middle of November of this year. Yeah. yeah. So it's a bit sad to see the, the well-known Prudential, this logo and the brand to disappear in the future. And Kevin, to be honest with you, red has never been my color. I definitely <laughs> prefer the blue and the green. <laughs> so I am yeah. completely on. Okay. And I think in the long run, you know, M&G will have the same kind of significance that mm. Prudential has had over the years. Yeah. As so, I've mentioned, fundamentally, our business will still be intact. Prudential, when did it start in South Africa? Was it in the 1990s? So uh, we were founded in Cape Town in 1994, mm. but we also have offices in Gauteng and Vintuk, right. and we also have business development managers in both PE and Durban. So mm. our presence is quite loud across South Africa as well as Namibia. For example, one of your well-known funds is a Prudential Balance Fund. Going forward, is going to change the name to MNG Balance Fund? Yes. Yeah. So you will see in the future where you would previously have seen Prudential Balanced Fund. It will now be shown as MNG Balanced Fund. Um, as well as our emails, for example, it will no longer be at Prudential. It mm. will be at MNG. And our website will also be changing accordingly. Right. Okay. And just going back to what you said about uh, your investment philosophy, I think that a lot of uh, the fund managers, they talk about long term, but uh, I just need to also unpack for our viewers. Uh, when you mean, when you say long term, how long is long term? Because for some people, <laughs> long term could be anything after one year is long term. Uh, for some people, it could be five years. So what do you mean by long term? Kevin, that's a good question. And I think especially in the times that we live where instant gratification is quite a big thing. As you've mentioned, for most people, long-term kind of sets in 12 months later. <laughs> um, I think the best estimate for long-term could be anything between seven and 10 years, uh, especially if you're looking at investments, for example, in the equity sector or the property sector, mm. a longer-term view would most definitely be the best to adopt. But in terms of our long-term investment philosophy, we definitely seek to deliver returns consistently over the longer term. So in other words, in shorter time periods, for example, between three and five years, there might be some kind of volatility, but over a longer term period, there will definitely be more consistency when it comes to the delivered returns. You're part of the MMG group. So does that also affect the way you are going to manage money uh, going forward, because Prudential has been a local fund manager, does that mean that uh, you are able to access the investment expertise overseas or MNG? They are going to manage the offshore portion of the funds going forward. So, Kevin, as I mentioned earlier, MNG has always been the majority stakeholder of Prudential. So, we have always benefited from having access to the global research, the global analysts, mm. the global fund managers, but that will definitely be strengthened now that our ties have strengthened. And mm. in addition, m and has always managed the offshore funds of Prudential, as mm. well as the offshore components of our local funds. So we've always had a very close relationship with m and and mm. we've always had strong communication and good access both ways between right. Prudential and m and Okay. So what makes MNG or Prudential stand out from the crowd? There's lots of fund managers, Prudential, MNG is being one of the well-known largest fund managers in South Africa. What are your competitive advantages? So Kevin, I've actually put quite some thought into this question and I've come to realize that it's not about what sets us apart, but rather what gives us apart. 
The single most important thing when it comes to any type of investment is diversification. Mm. Whether it's diversification across sectors, asset classes, or asset managers, we all play an important role in helping clients achieve their investment goals. And I believe that Prudential brings the necessary stability and consistency to an otherwise riskier or more volatile portfolio. Mm. So including a Prudential managed fund into your portfolio could be just what your portfolio needs for the necessary diversification. Mm. And then other than having an important role to play in diversification of a portfolio, there are definitely things that set us apart. For example, 28.08 of Prudential is staff owned. So we really put our money where our mouth is. Mm. We aren't making any investments with the client's money that we wouldn't make with our own money. So skin in the game is an important concept to us at Prudential. Mm. Skin in the game paired with our team-based approach enables us to focus on consistently and prudently achieving our investment goals. There is not a single function at Prudential that does not operate within a team setting. Even making coffee at the office happens in a team. <laughs> Do you also own shares in Prudential? Yes. Yeah, so 28.08% is completely staff owned. Yes. So you've got skin in the game. You know, we All also right. have. The- How long do you have to hold it until you, you are able to realize that? Oh, well, that's a good question, Kevin. I'm actually not sure. <laughs> I should ask her <laughs> out. Um, but we do also, of course, receive the dividends from okay. holding the shares. Yes. <laughs> and then another thing that sets us apart is our focus on investor behavior. Over the years, Prudential has invested a lot of time and money into researching investor behavior and translating this research into stories and graphs that advisors can share with their clients and investors. Mm. These stories and graphs make use of plain, easy to understand and unambiguous language without the industry industry specific jargon, making it much easier for clients and investors to understand. So translating investor research behavior into easy to understand concepts plays a vital role in educating the general public about investing and the importance of not only having a financial plan, but also the importance of sticking to it. In June of this year, Peter Rigu, our chief client and distribution officer, he hosted a webinar titled Everyone's Got a Plan Until They Get Punched in the Face, famously said by Mike Tyson. And the webinar is available to view on our website, but I thought it might be interesting to share some of these insights. You are focusing on this investor behavior and uh, getting people to understand about what we call the behavioral finance. Yes, uh, so it's definitely one of my favorite concepts to talk about. And all of the advisors that um, regularly see me, they will testify that I kind of drive them crazy because it's just investor behavior, investor behavior all the time. But it is such an important concept, Kevin. Um, And I'll illustrate it by looking at the screen at the moment. So we start off by looking at where an investor's lifetime return comes from. And there are essentially two components. The first being the most obvious is the return from investment. And then the second is the investor's own behavior. And studies have shown that the impact on lifetime return of investor behavior is at least as big as the impact of the investment return. Mm. It is a very important component of this equation, not some factor we can just ignore and simply focus on the investment return component. The term investor behavior on its own probably does not mean much. Next, we need to ask what behavior. Disciplined behavior can, of course, enhance the, the eventual returns, whereas bad behavior can detract value. Hmm. It is very important that we help control or manage the investor behavior component. And one of the ways in which we do this is through the setting up of a financial plan. And advisors typically do this when sitting down with an investor for the first time. So advisors play a very important role in managing investor behavior through the use of a financial plan. And to further support this idea, I'd like to share some findings from a study conducted in Canada. Mm. So the study was conducted on two groups of people, the one being a group of people who don't receive financial advice, and then the other being a group of people who do receive advice. The group advice between four and six years was shown to have 1.58 times more assets under management than those not advised. And the group advised for more than 15 years 
was shown to have 2.73 times more assets under management than those not advised. Mm. And the study found two reasons for this. The first being better allocation to non-cash assets. And then, then the second, the group of advised people had much more disciplined behavior during the tough times of market volatility. Sure. So it is to see just how important disciplined behavior is in achieving desired returns mm. yeah. and the role that an advisor plays in this. I've mentioned that bad behavior detracts value, and the following graph illustrates this perfectly. We call this bad behavior value-destroying behavior. Mm. So essentially what this graph is showing you is the impact of switching to cash after you've been experiencing pain. Cash in this case is represented by the multi-asset income and the interest-bearing short-term categories, and they are represented by the blue and yellow lines. And we can see between March of 2017 and March of 2020 that the red line, which is the multi-asset high equity category, definitely underperformed in comparison to the two other categories. And if at this point in March of 2020, uh, uh, investors made the decision to switch to cash because they would rather be getting the returns that cash is giving than the returns from the equity category, the problem with that is, Kevin, you never bank the past performance of the category you are switching into. You simply bank the losses that you realize by switching out yeah. at a low point. And then you can easily find yourself in a situation like this. Mm. Over the next year, from March 2020 to March 2021, the high equity category seriously outperformed, whereas the other two categories failed to return double digits. Mm. And it is clear to see the impact of switching when you have been taking some strain for, for some time. So yes, that is what we call bad behavior. And for more or similar insights, feel free to check out the insights tab on our website at www.prudential.co.za. Yeah, this explanation is very powerful. When I think back to March last year, I had a client after March, then she received a statement from the fund manager and she was uh, screaming at me and saying, you know, <laughs> Kevin, you put me into this investment. Now I lost 12%. Yes. Then I had to actually spend to her at length about the invested because this is uh, a once in a lifetime event that hit the market. And you saw there's a uh, huge uh, market crash, but uh, you had to stay put. And uh, fortunately, that uh, client listened to me and she stayed put. And then subsequent to that, uh, the, the market did recover. And there was actually recovering faster than I thought. So now she has a positive return, uh, 15 or 18 months down the line. And then now she doesn't even quibble with me about what I was uh, saying to her. So I think it's no, important, definitely. you know, having the discipline. Shanali, based on your analysis or your studies, uh, what kind of a bad uh, investor behavior, apart from those ones, maybe saying uh, they panic when there's market crash, what kind of other bad uh, investor behaviors that could arise? Well, I think one thing that could probably be mentioned is the idea of herd behavior. We sit in a world where people are constantly in conversation when it comes to their investments and where conversation is easy, especially due to internet and the virtual world. Hmm. And if you hear one of your friends saying, you know, I've told my advisor to switch me. I'm done with this type of investment. I only want offshore or whatever the case may be. Mm. We as humans, we tend to think everyone else can't be wrong and I am right. Yeah. If everyone else is doing it, surely I should be doing the same thing. Mm. So herd behavior is definitely another problem. And there are many other preconceived ideas that yeah. could be costing them their own returns. Mm. And I think a major one and one that we've definitely spent a lot of time on at Prudential is specifically the impact of switching out at a very low point. Yeah, yeah. I think just comes to mind is about overconfidence. You know, I think that recently, especially over the last 12, 18 months, and also with the phenomenon of the cryptocurrency, the Bitcoin and the Tesla, especially when I come across younger clients, they keep asking me, so Kevin, <laughs> what do you think about Bitcoin and uh, investing in the cryptocurrency? And uh, for people who may have, made money over the last 24 months uh, due to investing in cryptocurrency, they feel like invisible, they can't go wrong. <laughs> I think these Definitely. are the kind of the things I always try to 
for the investors to say, you know, you may have made money, but uh, if, or if you if you haven't made the money in Tesla or Bitcoin in the past, is the right time to jump in now. Uh, now that uh, you can see it's very high and uh, the regulatory actions that could come in, to, you know, like for example, China actually banned all the crypto uh, transactions and things like that. So I think I think these are the, the kind of uh, investor biases that I have to face myself. <laughs> but also speak to my clients to say, you know, do you actually want to do that? Because you, you don't want to actually lose your shirt, so to speak. <laughs> no, and Kevin, I think, as you mentioned earlier, the overconfidence, you know, when returns are great, we tend to give ourselves a pat on the back. Yeah. And when things are going tough, we tend to blame others. Hmm. And a year like 2020, where the markets fell with nearly 35% in a little bit more than a month's time, yeah. anyone could have bought nearly any kind of share and they would have had some good returns from it. You know, the market came from a very low point, but consistently delivering good returns over the long term, skill is required when it comes to doing that. A shot in the dark, you know, they say a blind chicken also picks sometimes or a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> I feel like that's the same kind of concept. We, yeah. we, we can't emphasize enough the skill and how important skill is when it comes to delivering returns over the long term. Mm. Now let's turn to Prudential's range of uh, unit trusts or funds. That uh, Let's first talk about your retail range of funds. Can you just walk us through in terms of uh, what you offer? What type of investors will be suitable for each type of the funds? So I would like to start off with just a little bit about who manages our funds. So as I mentioned earlier, Prudential is very set on having a team-based approach. In the following slide, you will see that we have a very well-resourced investment team with over 400 years of cumulative experience. And as you can see, we have three main categories when it comes to our local funds, being equity, fixed income, and multi-asset. So our equity funds include the Prudential Equity Fund, the Prudential Dividend Maximizer Fund, and then the Prudential SA Equity Fund, which invests solely in local equities. And then in terms of a similar risk profile, we also have property funds, including the Prudential Enhanced SA Property Tracker Fund, and then the Prudential Property Fund. When we go over to fixed income, we have funds that include the Prudential Income Fund and the Prudential Enhanced Income Fund. And then last but not least, multi-asset funds, which include the Prudential Balanced Fund and the Prudential Inflation Plus Fund. And they are both REC 28 funds and the Prudential Enhanced Income Fund is also a REC 28 fund that can be classified as one of the multi-asset funds. And as I mentioned earlier, we also have the offshore funds managed by M&G and our offshore funds include both a RAND denominated feeder fund as well as a dollar denominated direct offshore fund. And they include the Prudential Global Bond Fund, the Prudential Global Inflation Plus Fund, the Prudential Global Balanced Fund, and the Prudential Global Equity Fund. And fund fact sheets for all of our funds are available on our website that I mentioned earlier. And there you will also see the funds being categorized as either long-term growth, short-term growth, income and growth, target income, post-retirement, and tax-free. Mm. So the funds that I've mentioned is not an exhaustive list. Prudential has many funds to offer and whatever your needs, I am sure we have what you are looking for. But mm. if you have any other questions around the funds, you can visit our website or you can just send me an email at shanley.borsop at prudential.co.za. Mm. So over the, the last five years or even longer term, uh, how have your funds been doing? <laughs> so Kevin, I think if you look at any fund in the industry over the last 12 months, you will definitely see some great returns. Sure. You know, the market came from a very low point and the, the, the recovery has been excellent. And over an even longer term, if we go 10 years plus, our funds consistently outperform their benchmark and you will always see the real return double digit if you look at our longer term performance results. And then in the more shorter term, if we look at maybe three to five years, it of course depends on the kind of fund that you are looking at. So, for example, our equity fund performed very well, whereas the Inflation Plus fund, for example, 
um, delivered not the best returns if you look at a three-year track record, primarily because of the local equity market not delivering any returns over a five-year period, and of course, the pain caused by the property market mm. in the more recent years. Mm. So it definitely depends on what time period you are looking at. But I think what is important is you need to focus on the longer term. Because at the end of the day, you aren't investing in a fund because of its returns. You are investing in a fund because you believe in the investment philosophy of those that manage the fund. It's very important that your own investment philosophy be aligned with the investment philosophy of the fund you are choosing to invest in. I see there are two equity funds in your portfolio. One is Prudential Equity Fund. The other one is Prudential Dividend Maximizer Fund. What's the difference between the two funds or are they really much of the same? They are very much alike, Kevin. So I believe that their correlation is somewhere around 95%. Mm. So it's definitely not two funds you should be using at the same time if your goal is to diversify. Um, the maximizer funds look to, to maximize dividends for investors, whereas yes. a prudential equity fund may be looking for more like a capital growth. Yes, so the dividend maximizer fund specifically seeks shares with a high dividend growth yield, okay. whereas the equity fund might not necessarily do that. Um, but they offer very similar investment opportunities, but dividend maximizer might just be a bit more aggressive in terms of its offshore exposure. But we also have the third one, given the mm. SA equity fund. Yes. So as I mentioned, yes. that fund only invests in local equity. So there you will find no offshore exposure. Mm. Given the shrinking JSC, you know, if I last time I look at it, it's maybe only like 300 companies listed on the JSC. Everyone talks about concentration risk. If you look at the top of the large caps, they account for like 60% of the market cap. So don't you find it's really too limiting to just invest in SA equities? Kevin, I think it's very important to remember that any investment, as I mentioned earlier, the most important thing is diversification. So whether it's cash, offshore, local equities or bonds, all asset classes play an important role in achieving your desired outcome. And I hear what you are saying about the possible concentration. And one of the ways that we have chosen to go about this is we have adopted to use the CAP SWIX index for both our Prudential Balanced Fund and our Inflation Plus Fund. And the intention around that was to cap the risk of some of the bigger players, for example, Nasbash. I'm going to ask you a probing question. All the fund managers, probably they want to say that they're good at everything. But seriously, when you look at uh, Prudential and your strength, would you say your strength is in like local equities, offshore equities, fixed income, property? What's the area that really stand out for Prudential? Well, I think the proof is in the pudding. And whether you are using our income funds, our multi-asset funds, or our equity funds, there's definitely a lot of skill being shown across the board. Um, we don't call ourselves equity specialists or income speci specialists or local specialists or offshore specialists. We really do employ an investment team that work together in ensuring that we do perfect in all of the areas. Another topic that has been going on for a long time is about the uh, cost of investing and uh, where because of the competition, whether passive funds, uh, ETFs, etc., a lot of active fund uh, managers like yourself feeling the pressure to make sure you actually sharpen your pencil and uh, bring down the cost of uh, fund management from uh, MNG or Prudential's point of view. What have you been doing over the last three to five years to try to keep the cost low or reduce the cost for investors? So, Kevin, I appreciate your question, and I think it's a very good one. Um, first of all, when it comes to the cost of investing, just like I mentioned that diversification across asset classes is important, the same goes for passive versus active. You know, active management definitely comes at an additional cost um, because you've got the potential of additional returns whereas passive is definitely a cheaper option. Um, but they both play a role. It's neither or, it's both. And when it comes to active investing, you know, again, the proof is in the pudding. If you are achieving the returns and if the benchmarks and objectives are consistently being outperformed, 
I definitely think that the cost is worth it. But in terms of helping our clients, we have been cutting some of our costs over the past couple of years, where we've brought down costs on our equity funds as well as our multi-asset funds. So we do try our best to keep the costs as low as possible, but without foregoing the growth of the business. Mm, Sure. And uh, do you charge performance fees on your funds? Not on all of them. Um, So it's just some of our equity funds that have a performance fee attached to them, whereas our multi-asset funds don't and our fixed income assets don't. And I believe the offshore funds also don't have any performance fees attached to them. Mm. Shannon, thanks very much for your time and uh, for your insights so that uh, we understand more about Prudential and MNG. Until next time. Bye. Thank you, Kevin. I really appreciate you having me. It was awesome. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you like this episode and share it with your friends. 